people in Japan will head to polling stations in less than three weeks to vote in a general election. When they make, mark their ballots, they won't just be choosing their lawmakers. They'll also be deciding on how they power their homes and businesses in the future. The use of atomic energy has been debated since last year's accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Now a new political party is offering voters a clear choice, a nuclear-free Japan. NHK World's Chiaki Ishikawa reports. A governor in Western Japan launched Tomorrow Party of Japan. Yuki Kokada insists she and her colleagues will eliminate nuclear power. She also says they will create a program to improve energy efficiency and separate power generation from power distribution. We'll draw up a program to phase out nuclear power generation in 10 years, and the program will cover all necessary conditions, including more efficient use of renewable energy and fossil fuels. They will be competing for votes against the ruling Democratic Party. DPJ leaders have already pledged to work toward reaching zero reliance on nuclear energy within two decades. The Democrats are aiming to put all nuclear power plants in Japan offline by the 2030s. We will use all our resources to achieve this. DPJ leader Yoshihiko Noda is also promising he won't restart reactors until inspectors at Japan's nuclear watchdog confirm the units are safe. The main opposition, Liberal Democratic Party, is taking a different approach. It's pledging to establish the best energy mix for Japan within a decade. LDP members say it would be irresponsible to decide now whether to eliminate nuclear power, considering the impact on people's lives and the economy. We'll restart nuclear plants wherever necessary, as long as their safety is guaranteed. Among the so-called third force movement, the Japan Restoration Party advocates zero reliance on nuclear power. Leader Shintaro Ishihara wants to go around the big utility companies by encouraging firms that create renewable energy to become power distributors. Opposition to atomic energy has grown in Japan since the Fukushima Daiichi accident. But members of the business community want to keep nuclear plants online. Japanese voters will have their say when they head to the polls on December 16th. Chiaki Ishikawa, NHK World, Tokyo. Have you ever had your mind blown? If not, I think it's time I've showed you something. So how dangerous is this nuclear waste at those facilities? Do you it's think? been said that a Dixie cup full of this waste in a crowded restaurant, everyone would be dead in the restaurant inside of an hour. According to the Associated Press, at the time of the earthquake, there was 3,400 tons of fuel and seven uh, holding tanks. These are old rods that are stored uh, on that site above the nuclear reactors. There's also 877 tons in the reactors themselves, and that's a total of 4,277 4, tons. Now, if you want to understand, say, what 800 tons of this stuff is like, now, um, one lady. of the Japanese physicists who came to our Hamburg conference calculated that 800 tons of depleted uranium, re if it's released into the air, is the atomicity equivalent or the equivalent number of radioactive atoms as 41,000 Nagasaki bombs. Okay, so if you still don't get where I'm coming to and what I'm saying to you is... Think about Pakistan and India when they set off nine nuclear weapons each in the night and the entire planet went insane because you released that radiation into the environment. Imagine what she's saying, 800 tons of those 4,200 tons that are at the Japanese facilities, you're looking at around 220,000 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation. So if you think India and Pakistan setting off 18 nuclear weapons and France sneaking in a couple of them on the side, was catastrophic, right? And so that's why I have to make this video so you can put two and two together. But Tom Carpenter will explain to you what a drop on the leg of a fruit fly, how dangerous just a drop of this uh, stuff is. If, even the amount that would fit on the leg of a fruit fly, 
uh, is considered a problem dose, and that's happened at Hanford. Fruit flies have landed on contaminated materials and then flown off to go to the lunchroom and deposit contamination on food and on tables and whatnot, and they've had to evacuate a 20-acre area at the Hanford site because of uh, hot fruit flies and wasps. So imagine how many hot fruit flies and how many hot wasps will be flying around Japan this spring and this summer. And next spring and next summer, and 10,000 years, springs and summers. It's not only a Dixie cup that will kill everybody in that restaurant inside of an hour. It'll kill everybody in that restaurant for 4 billion years every hour. So you can drag it all the bodies and drag the bodies, new people back in, and they'll be dead in an hour, drag them in. You can do that for 4 billion years. That's the same material. The same material. So I'll just show you a, a clip of number three reactor has MOX fuel in it. That's two million times more dangerous than the stuff I'm showing you here. Two million times! So reactor number three, six percent of those rods is has MOX fuel into it. Two million times more dangerous than the stuff I'm telling you it's here now. It's said that a Dixie cup full of this waste in a crowded restaurant, everyone would be dead in the restaurant inside of an hour. This stuff is being liberated into the environment, and that's why you have firefighters on a suicide mission with hoses in their hands trying to spray water. That's why those helicopters, they're not trying to drop water on, on the fuel plant. They're trying to drop it all over that area on all those rods. See? Those pilots are not bad pilots. They're doing this on purpose. They don't want to tell you that 4,200 tons, 600,000 rods, have been blasted all over that area. So the whole area is hot till the end of time. But they have to try to contain this to cool it down and then so they can bury it. They can't do one without the other, see? So they have to sacrifice lives. Anyway, best wishes. I hope this informed you. When the mainstream press and the government says nobody could have predicted this, they're lying through their fucking teeth. World weather experts say the average global temperature this year was the ninth highest on record. The World Meteorological Organization revealed this during the latest round of the UN COP18 climate talks in Qatar. The body says that between January and October, the average temperature of the planet increased by about 0.45 degrees Celsius, compared to the average for the 30-year period ending in 1990. The organization says temperatures began to rise in late April after remaining low since last fall. At that time, the La Nina phenomenon was in effect off the coast of South America. La Nina causes low sea surface temperatures and affects the weather around the world. Global warming, of course, is not just a future threat. It is happening now, as evidenced by the rapid melting of the, Antarc of the Arctic sea ice. The WMO says that as of September, higher air temperatures had shrunk the Arctic ice cap by 18% from the previous minimum observed in 2007. Listen to this article titled, TEPCO's Chief Question Over Nuclear Plant Problems. NHK never did make it into a video. So sorry for this stupid voice box person. Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority has questioned the president of Tokyo Electric Power Company about its nuclear safety policy. Naomi Hirose met the chief of authorities' secretariat, Katsuhiko Okada. On Thursday, Okada is said to have demanded in the measly 30-minute closed-door meeting that TEPCO's management play an active role to ensure safety at its nuclear power stations. That's right a measly 30-minute meeting behind closed doors, no less, to discuss safety of nuclear power stations. Akita reportedly cited a recent series of problems and legal violations reported at the firm's nuclear plants. Yes, you heard that correct. Freaking legal violations. We're sorry we broke the law, but I apologize. Among the violations is damage to spent fuel assemblies found at TEPCO's Kashiwazaki Karawa plant on the west coast of Japan. 
Akeda reportedly asked Hirose about Tokyo Electric Power Company's in-house safety system and how management is engaged. After the closed-door meeting, Akeda said the key to organizational reform lies in how management aggressively tackles the challenge and ensures that rank-and-file workers share its intentions. Well, what the hell does that mean? Seriously? Hirose apologized for the firm's problems and said reforming the nuclear power sector is TEPCO's top priority. Hirose apologized for legal violations instead calling them problems. WTF, he said the firm will take specific steps to make its top officials' ideas clear to all employees. Oh really, what specific steps will that be Mr. Hirose? On Fukushima Believable. Two Japanese plant makers are to join forces in thermal power generation to better meet increasing global demand. Top executives at Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Hitachi announced Thursday that they agreed to set up a new thermal power utility in January 2014. The new utility will lead the global industry, capitalizing on the strengths of the two firms. We'll utilize the combined resources globally. We're Japan's best partnership. Mitsubishi will have a 65% stake in the planned company, while Hitachi will get the remaining 35%. The two firms plan to bring together their thermal power divisions under the new company. They aim to increase their global standing through economies of scale by expanding their market share in thermal power. The United States is rediscovering the advantages of cost-efficient thermal power. That's after technologies enabled domestic production of shell gas there. And power demand in emerging economies across Asia has been rising, seeing as their economies have been growing rapidly. Now, the uh, latest plan would bring Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Hitachi closer in infrastructure projects. Both companies regard thermal power generation as the core of their business.